Hey, this is another video by Pet Rock. Today I'll be working on my 03 Dodge Durango, 4.7 liter. Yesterday my wife and I were out for a drive and uh, the door got closed a little bit more uh, firmly than I would have had, have liked. And uh, rear passenger uh, driver's side window just dropped. It's down in here somewhere, which basically means that the window regulator broke. So uh, this video is going to cover how to replace the window regulator on this vehicle. Obviously to repair the window regulator you need to uh, keep the door open. Um, if your uh, dome light has a problem where it doesn't want to shut off automatically, you might want to pull your battery cable, negative battery cable, so you don't drain your battery while you're doing this job. So this is a bit of a puzzle, but you have to remove things in a certain order, otherwise you'll just be uh, fighting against yourself. So the first thing that needs to be removed is this uh, trim extension, is what it's called in the service manual. You can buy a set of uh, uh, plastic trim removal tools uh, from your local hardware store or auto parts store for a few dollars. I actually can't find mine right now, so what I'm going to use, I'm just going to use an old uh, normal kitchen spatula. Uh, you just take it in here, you just pop, put, uh, pry it in, like that, pop. It's only held on by clips, so you don't have to worry about breaking it. Just pop, and out it comes. So there's a uh, fastener here, clip, clip, another clip. They correspond to each of those. Next you have to remove five Phillips head screws. Uh, there's one here, one under here under the door handle, and there's two. There's one right here and one right there. The hidden one is behind the door handle. If you look right there. You can take a small uh, uh, flathead screwdriver, just put it in there, pry it a little bit, doesn't take a lot of force, and you'll see the screw right there. Okay, once you've got all the screws undone, uh, you just grab onto the door handle, lift up slightly, and pull out. Now you don't want to pull out too far because you're going to have uh, some uh, electrical connections in here and some latches that you're going to need to undo. Okay, here's a look inside the door panel from above. You've got two bars right here that are uh, that attach to the door handle. You've got an electrical connection right there, and you've got an electrical connection right here that you need to undo. To disconnect these rods, this plastic piece is on a pivot, so this will pivot like that if you, when you move it. So the, what's holding it on is this piece right here. So you push on this, this way, so it'll pivot, and then you push on this towards, the door, uh, towards yourself, and it will pop out, like that. And then you lift up, and then your cable's free. So you do the same thing on the top one. You push, so it'll swivel, and lift up. Now that those uh, these two rods are disconnected, the door panel can actually pull out further. Don't pull it off all the way, because as I said earlier, you've got electrical connections here and here. Uh, this connection right here, you just push on the tab and pull out. And this one, you push on, the, uh, on this part of the connector and pull down. Then you can lift the door off the rest of the way. Now that the door panel's off, uh, you need to remove this uh, weather guard. Uh, just if uh, slowly and carefully, just pull it down on it. This stuff is sticky, but you don't want to destroy it because you kind of you want to reuse this goop that's on there. It'll just pull off. Now that I got the weather stripping off, uh, now I have access to everything I need in this area. So these two bolts right here are the top two bolts for the window regulator frame. These two bolts and that third bolt are for the uh, uh, window regulator motor. And these two bolts right here are for the uh, um, bottom of the window regulator frame. Uh, as you can see in my case, here's the window. It completely moves up and down freely because it's no longer connected to the window regulator. Uh, this window regulator works off of a cable system where you have one cable coming from the top that pulls and another cable that comes from the bottom that pulls and depending on which direction the, uh, the motor is going it'll either pull the window up or pull the window down. Uh, and in this case since the window just basically fell that means that the top cable has, uh, uh, um, has broken. Okay next you need to disconnect the window from the window regulator um, and you do that by raising it up. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right there and another one on the other side and the access to that whole bolt is right here to the upper left of the speaker. So you just raise it up as high as you can get it. You put a 10 millimeter 
don't worry about the uh, window just dropping because there's a, there are tabs in the window regulator itself uh, right here, for example, that will, um, that hold in uh, hold the door up, uh, so you don't have to really worry. And there you go. So now the window is free from the window regulator. Now you want to get a piece of wood or something similar. Push the window all as hot, as far as you can. Put the piece of wood inside and prop the window up with that piece of wood. Okay, next you need to disconnect the wiring harness for the window regulator. It's right here. It's a cable that's going into the door. You basically press on the tab and pull. That's it. And shove it back into the door for easier removal later. Okay, now you remove the uh, window motor itself. It's held on by these, these two bolts at the bottom and this bolt at the top. The only one you actually have to fully remove is the one at the top. These two bolts at the bottom you only have to loosen because you can lift it up and pull it out these, uh, the holes that they're attached to. Next you reach your arm in here and disconnect the window regulator itself, uh, the motor itself I should say. Next you take off the bottom two bolts for the uh, um, window regulator frame. Now, like the uh, motor, you don't have to un disconnect this far, uh, the one that's this one on this side, uh, because you can just lift up and disconnect it. Next, we take out the top two bolts on the window regulator frame. Now, like the uh, motor, you don't have to take them out all the way. You can just loosen it, and then you can push it to the side and push it back. And now the window regulator is free. Okay, so I've adjusted the block. I've pulled the window up further and I've taken my block of wood right here and put it horizontally across the uh, frame support on the inside of the door. Uh, this allows the, the, the window to be held up higher, which will give you more room to take the window regulator out through this hole. So now you just take the window regulator out through this big hole. And that's it, that's the window regulator. So now we just gotta put the new one in. So if you look closely at this one, that little nub is supposed to actually be attached down here. So that's what broke on this one. Yeah, here's the new window regulator. Uh, it comes with the motor and the regulator itself. Uh, this one's made by Dorman. It's part number 741. Five nine eight. It's just uh, picked it up from my local auto parts store. It does come pre-lubed a little bit in the channel, but what I like to do is I like to take a little bit of uh, white lithium grease and spray it in the channel just to give it a little bit better, a little bit better lubrication. So the window will slide better once I get it installed. So now you want to take the window regulator, and it tends to come with new hardware here and here and here. Um, you need to take off the top one, the top bolt, and loosen the bottom two so that you can slide it into those grooves uh, in the frame. You don't have to take them all the way off. This just makes it so the installation of the motor itself is a, a little bit easier. So now you take the whole window regulator and slide it into place. Now that you've got the two side bolts in that, are, that uh, can be slid back and forth now you can put the top bolt in, you put that in finger tight, and now you can put the bottom bolt in. So now you can uh, um, push the motor down and install its final bolt on the top. Again, finger tight. So you want to um, uh, tighten down the ones that won't move, like this one on the motor and this one on the regulator first. And then once you've gotten those tightened down, then you can uh, uh, tighten down the ones that are adjustable, where you can move the, move the object uh, up or down, left or right. Okay, now that those are tight, you need to uh, find the, uh, the motor cable and snake it through this hole. Snake it through the hole like that. So I'm of the opinion that uh, um, any kind of electrical connection, especially one that can be exposed to the elements, should have some kind of dielectric grease on it just to prevent corrosion and things like that. So I got a big old thing of dielectric grease that I picked up from my uh, uh, local auto parts store and I'll put it on the uh, connector, just a little bit, doesn't take a lot, and then make the connection. What that'll do is that'll help prevent any corrosion from happening in the connector. If you're lucky enough, the uh, this little trolley 
will be in line so that you'll have access to both the bolt holes on both sides. In my case, I'm not. This thing's about an inch and a half too high. Uh, so I'm going to need to raise and lower it in order to get it uh, get access to the right side bolt hole. Okay, and in order to actually move the window regulator up and down, you have to have the switch plugged in. So you can either balance the, uh, the door panel in place and then uh, uh, move it up and down, or you can just remove the window switch itself. It's right here. It's only attached by these little press, uh, press clips. So you press the clip in with your fingers, it doesn't take a lot of pressure, and push out. And it will just come right out like that. So if you look closely, you got two, two uh, press fit tabs. You just press them down and that's all that's holding them into the, into the plastic. And then on the front side of the door, it's just a little, uh, um, little hook that will uh, hook into the plastic down here. So as you take the uh, window, take out your block of wood, lower it down slowly until it hits, hits the notches on the inside of the uh, window trolley. Okay, so I've got the uh, window switch uh, hooked in. I've got one bolt holding the uh, window to the window, uh, window regulator trolley. And so now I need to lower the window so that I can get access to this hole right here. There we go. Put the, wind, the switch out of the way so you don't hit it and break your speaker. Okay, once you've got them uh, started, you just tighten them down. Tightening down the... Uh, Outside one first, and then the inside. Again, there is no torque spec, so just tighten them down until they're nice and snug. Okay, now you can test your window. Make sure it goes all the way up, and all the way down. That's it. If you hear anything binding or scratching or uh, any kind of grinding noises, um, be sure to investigate those now uh, and making sure that there's nothing that's uh, uh, gonna end up failing later. But while you have this pan the door panel off, uh, you might as well try to lube up these uh, window channels that uh, the window slides up and down on. If your window is running slow to begin with, uh, this might be the reason why, is because the, uh, the channels may be a little gummed up. So what I like to use is uh, um, this stuff called a uh, uh, dry lube by uh, maybe the same people who make uh, PB Blaster. Um, I picked this up at, I think it was Home Depot, uh, but I think uh, most auto parts stores also carry it. It is what it says, it's a dry lube. It's, uh, uh, it's kind of like a powder, it comes out kind of like a chalk. And you spray it into these channels and uh, uh, when the window slides up and down, it'll, uh, um, it'll be lubricated, obviously. Uh, it's better than, than using like WD-40 or some other kind of grease uh, in these channels. Because it's dry, it doesn't pick up dirt. It also won't wash off as easy. The fact that it doesn't pick up dirt is is the is the key here because it's the dirt that usually tends to slow down or gum up your uh, window tracks. So uh, using this stuff on this on these window tracks uh, seems to help a lot in my case. So do it if you want to. If you don't, okay. Just take a little bit of it and just spray it in there. And uh, that's it. Okay. Now that you've got the window uh, to your satisfaction, moving up and down and everything like that. Next you need to reinstall the uh, weather stripping. If you look closely, there's a little dimple in both sides of the uh, of this thing. They go into the holes here and one over here. Um, you want to make sure that those line up so that that's usually the first thing that you want to put in. So you put that in there, that in there, and then stick the glue in between. This helps ensure that you line everything up properly and that you get everything where it needs to be. You want to make sure that the holes, for example, for the, uh, um, for the door panel are free and clear and that the cables are accessible through, through the uh, various holes. So that's pretty much it. Just double check, pressing down on everything. Making sure holes like this, for example, where you're screwing the door uh, door panel on, are accessible. Holes like the uh, these for the uh, um, for the wiring harnesses are accessible. Same with the ones up here. And that's pretty much it. Now we can attach the the door panel. If you remove the uh, door switch, like I did, it's actually pretty simple to put back in. You put the front in first, like that, and then press down. That's it. 
Now if you look at the bottom of the door panel, there are two hooks here. There are three hooks in the middle, actually four, and then two at the top. You want to make sure that all those line up. You get the bottom two hooks and just rest them in the holes at the very bottom there. Then you uh, connect your wiring harness for the door switch. You just click in. Then you take the wiring harness for the speaker, if, you have, if yours has one, and just click that in. So next you got to get these two bars attached to these two brackets right in here. So you take the bottom one and stick it in the hole right there. Then you take the top one and stick it in its hole right there. This is hard to do with uh, one hand, as you can tell. Now that you've gotten them both in, all you need to do is snap them, snap the cable in place like that so that they end up looking like that. And now you can uh, uh, mount the door panel the rest of the way. So you just take the door panel from the handle, lift up slightly, push that way, and then that'll engage those, uh, those hooks in the door panel, and then push down. And uh, now, it's, now it's in. Now you screw the Phillips head screws back into the places that you took them out of uh, before. If as you're trying to screw the Phillips head screws in, things don't line up, that means something is out of whack. Uh, you should screw the Phillips head screws in only partial, uh, only part way, like I'd say about halfway. Um, this allows you to be able to adjust the location of the uh, uh, of the door panel uh, while you're screwing everything back together again. Once you've gotten them all in, then tighten everything down. Last thing you do is you put the uh, top door trim bit in. You put the bottom in, slide it into the little there's a little uh, pin here that slides into that hole, and just slide it in. That's it. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully this uh, helped you out. Um, again, this is Pet Rocks Garage. Uh, if you liked what you saw, uh, please click like. If you want to, if you like the channel, uh, please subscribe. More videos coming soon.